So one of the first components we want to talk about is the solar charge controller. Basically, we get the power from the solar panels, it comes into here, and this controls the voltage output to the battery to charge it. Make sure it's charged properly and not overcharged. A couple of nice things about this one, uh, this is the C40, which means that it's a 40 amp controller, and it also handles 12, 24, and 48 volt battery packs. One of the other important specs in here is that the C40 has a maximum input voltage of 125 volts. That means we're able to take multiple panels, in this case three in series, and still stay below that voltage. Now this is not an MPPT solar charge controller, it's only a PWM, that's an older style, uh, but it is made by Xantrex, and Xantrex, Trace, and Schneider are really all the same brand. Uh, they kind of bought each other out multiple times. All good quality products, good brand names. One of the other things nice about this Xantrex charge controller is it can be set up in a couple of different modes. And one of those modes is basically like a dump controller. So what it will do is when the battery is fully charged, it will kick the output of the solar panels over to something else. So one thing I might be able to do is set that up to a grid tie connection so that uh, when the batteries are full, I just send power to the grid to my house. We need some solar cable. This is usually 10 gauge or the metric equivalent. And you wanna make sure to have the connectors on the end match your solar panels. The most common type and what we have here is an MC4 connector. It's a lock-in connector with both a male and a female end. So when you get these with the male and female ends, you can use it as an extension cable. Alternatively, you can cut the cable in half and that way you have a, a male and a female end and the other end, the bare end, can go straight to charge controller or wherever else it needs to go. We also need a battery. This is a basically a 48 volt battery that I built from some Nissan Leaf cell modules. It's lithium repurposed electric car cells. Up on top we got a BMS, dedicated input, output, and a fuse. For wire management, I've got some of these little stainless steel cable clips. These are great for hooking the solar wires up onto the edge of the solar panel frame. A lot of times we'll also use zip ties. Stainless steel zip ties are also really nice if you can find those. And sometimes for larger components you might even use something like a stainless steel hose clamp. You need fuses, breakers, and disconnects for controlling and turning off power. Uh, we'll be using DC rated breakers and these mount onto a DIN rail inside this box. So I'll use these as inputs from the solar panel to the solar charge controller. I already have fuses and breakers uh, built in at the battery and the inverter, but we'll use DC breakers as a DC disconnect for the solar panels. You may also want some other type of instrumentation. I've already got a lot of info on the solar charge controller, uh, but so that'll take care of info about power from the solar panels, but I thought I'd use a little DC multimeter display with a DC current shunt. Um, th that'll give us information about how much power and energy is coming from the battery. This is the same little panel that I've used in my garage with my solar system and tracking energy from my electric car. Another thing to use are some cable glands. These are just little device where you, uh, basically you put the wire through and tighten it down. It makes a waterproof strain relief way to go into an enclosure with the wire. I'm also going to want some sort of a outdoor rated electrical electric outlet. So I'll have this on the outside of that truck toolbox where I can plug in whatever it is I want to run off of the inverter. And I've got this set up with two 20 amp outlets and it's a metal box, nice and sturdy. Uh, not shown here as a gasket that goes in here as well. 
the other big item needed for off-grid solar project is an inverter, which takes the battery direct current and converts it to alternating current wall power. Now, this is not actually an inverter. It's a UPS. It's an uninterruptible power supply, but I'm just going to repurpose it and use just the inverter section of this unit. And this was actually an inverter designed to work with a 48-volt uh, battery system. It was a rack mount uh, for IT stuff, uh, server room, that kind of thing. You'll also notice that it already has AC outlets on it, including a 20 amp duplex outlet. And then instead of the batteries being inside, I'm connecting them at this uh, Anderson disconnect plug. So I can plug it into the battery pack. You might recognize this from an old video of mine, the poor man's smart grid, where I used this uh, to charge my electric motorcycle and run my house off of it in a blackout. And when I got this, it was kind of all banged up, but so what, you know, the equipment still worked, uh, but it was rack mount design and that exactly does not fit into my truck toolbox. So I'm going to take this cover off, cut these ear offs and uh, put them back in, assemble it on the front, make it nice and solid and fit where it needs to go. And you already saw this in the last video, but uh, the last thing we need is some sort of a weatherproof enclosure for all the equipment to go in. This is an all aluminum truck box. I found this used for 50 bucks. Uh, the, sh the shocks uh, needed to be replaced. That was 10 bucks. It's gasketed. Uh, it also have an overhang and that overhang lines up exactly with this edge where I can put a couple of bolts through to bolt it on the frame. I love how perfectly it works. It, Exactly. I did not plan this and it is the exact right size. So right now I've got the box centered on the trailer. You probably can't see it, but I marked a little line right here. And the weight distribution side to side is even. It's centered. But the other thing is I did plan this out for a little bit of space in the middle. That's I have some marks over here thinking about where I would have put uh, some triangulation. But check out the solar panels. I'm just going to swing it down now and look at the clearance here it exactly misses the box tune in next time when we'll start assembling our electronic components that make the entire system work please like comment subscribe share these videos with your friends and until next time stay charged up